Blessings, bless, blessings, grace, peace, and blessings from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, YouTube. Welcome, Facebook. This is Brother O'Dane from Restorers of Truth Ministries. And I'm here just to give a, you know, a teaching, you know, and I pray that um it's going to help a lot of people um come to the realization of certain things that you know they may be experiencing. You know, and it's something that when we walk with the Lord. We go through experiences, you know, we grow through these experiences. The Lord teaches us, you know, he, he grooms us. He wants us to grow, especially when we read the word. We gain more knowledge of spiritual things, you know, things of life, what's going on. We come to know him more. We come to know how we're supposed to live, what we must put away, things in that nature in this walk. So, you know, I'm going to give this teaching. Basically, we see the title. What can be blocking your blessings, you know? And we're going to actually get into this. Um, the Old Testament is filled with a lot of stories, a lot of lessons we can learn from it, you know, things we can take away. It's a lot of meat in the Old Testament, a lot. You know, it goes into a lot of detail of things. And as you actually read it more and more, and the Holy Spirit fills you up with more knowledge, the Lord begins to open your eyes to see, you know, deep spiritual truths that's in the Old Testament. You know, that's not clear on the surface. You know, but that's one of the benefits of growing more knowledge and in wisdom. The Lord imparts that into you. So I pray you're blessed by this teaching. You know, if you have your Bibles, definitely follow along. I'll also be sharing my screen, giving certain scriptures. So I'm just going to pray us in. We're going to get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, O oh Lord God, that this team will touch people, O oh Lord God, that whoever needs to hear it, that they take heed to it, O oh Lord God. And we learn from it, O oh Lord God. And we even learn from other people's examples in the Old Testament, O oh Lord God. We learn what to do and what not to do. Heavenly Father, continue to shower your grace upon us and direct our path, O oh Lord God. Let this teaching go bear fruit, O oh Lord God, and let your will be done in our lives continually. And we thank you, Abba, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So if you see the title... This teaching is, are your blessings being blocked? You know, here's why. You know, there's times where, you know, the Lord, he shows us things, all right? Promises things, whether it's from a dream, vision, word of prophecy, through his word, when we spend in some time in prayer in our, our prayer closet, in our spirit, through his word, then he shows us confirmation of things. We hold on to it, you know, because these are promises from God. You know, these are things that he wants to bestow upon you. Things that you have asked for that's in accordance to his will. God desires to bless his people. All right. In the book of Ephesians, you know, as I did a teaching last night, you know, it says that, you know, we're blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The saints, when we're in Christ Jesus, we come to Christ. Right. We have spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Right. These blessings even start now. You know, they're in the spirit and God desires, desires to have them manifested in the physical world or the out. All right. There's blessings. Jesus came. Jesus said he came right to give life and to give it more abundantly. But he also said that the, the enemy, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. All right. So now what I'm going to say is I need everybody to pay attention. The devil cannot sabotage God's plans for your life. You can't. The devil cannot sabotage God's plans for your life. What happens is he gets, he tries to get you to sabotage it. That's right. How does he does that? Temptation to try and get you out of alignment with God's will for your life. The temptation to try and cause you to disobey God. All right. We see the instance in the garden. He tempted Eve, deceived her. Does she disobey God? He gave it to Adam. He disobeyed God. Boom. Death comes into the world. All right. We see it in the book of Kings. God promised um. Certain kings like Saul, Jeroboam, you know, 
once they become king, he promised that, you know, they may, I can't remember the exact promise, but, you know, they'll have a, a king on their thrones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. But because of their disobedience, that was nullified. All right. We see in the case of the Israelites coming from Egypt, God promised he's going to bring them into Canaan. You know, he's going to bring that generation to Canaan. However, their disobedience, their sin, lack of faith. The generation that came from Egypt, they didn't make it in. Only Joshua and Caleb did. So we see that there's conditions which are based upon our obedience and us staying in alignment with God's divine will. All right, this is important. This is this is something we have to take heed to. All right. It's not us just sitting down, sitting back and let everything flow into us. God is not a genie. That's not how it works. You see, but our obedience is acquired. All right. Because our faith is demonstrated by our obedience. And on the contrary, your lack of faith will be demonstrated by your disobedience. Okay. So that's something we have to remember. All right. Obedience. Now, I'm going to get into the main topic, the main scripture I'm going to use. You know, as you see the title, all your blessings being blocked, your blessings, your breakthrough, something that God has, has, has promised you, but things are happening. It hasn't come through yet. You're going through a lot of opposition. You don't know why. You know, you may be saying, oh, I rebuke you, Satan. Man, it's maybe, it's maybe, it's probably not even Satan. All right. We're going to get into all this. So, if you have your Bibles, we're going to start in Joshua. We're going to start into Joshua chapter 6. All right. So let's start at verses 15. I need everybody to pay attention to this, right? So this is about the walls of Jericho. All right. When God had told them, you know, he's giving them Jericho to go in, you know, take that land. All right. So this is what's going on now. Verse 15. Then on the seventh day, they got up at dawn and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. That was the only day they circled the city seven times. After the seventh time around, the priests blew the trumpets and Joshua commanded the people shout. For the Lord has given you the city. Now the city and everything in it must be devoted to the Lord for destruction. He said, shout for the Lord has given you the city. You see, when God gives you the victory, all right, it has to be done first in the realm of the spirit. Joshua could have declared this. He declared this in faith because it's something that God has already declared to him. All right. And he has to understand this. It has to first happen in the realm of the spirit. When God has given you the victory of something. Okay. So he says, the Lord shout for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city and everything in it must be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab, the prostitute and all those with her in her house will live because she hid the spies. We sent. Now, listen, here it is now. Here's the warning. But keep away from all things devoted to destruction, lest you yourselves be set apart for destruction. If you take. Any of these, you will set apart the camp of Israel for destruction and bring the disaster upon it. For all the silver and gold and all the articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They must go into the treasury. All right. Now, I need us to pay attention. God has given them the victory. All right. Because it happened in the realm of the spirit. For them to go take the land. All right. Go occupy the territory. Right. But he gives the warning saying, keep away from the things that are devoted to destruction, the accursed things. All right. The accursed things. Keep away from that right? because they are devoted to destruction. I'm going to switch to the New King James Version, as you're going to see. The translation in the New King James, James Version says, you know, accursed, basically, staying from the accursed things. Lest you become a curse when you take of the accursed things. All right. So now let's go to chapter seven. Now I need us all to pay attention now. All right. Now it says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, 
of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. So somebody trespassed, somebody disobeyed, somebody sinned, right? And it says the anger of the Lord burned against them. Now, now God has turned against them now. This, this is a principle now, all right? One person committed a sin and it's affecting everybody else. This can happen in the church. <laughs> this can happen in the church, you know? One sinner can destroy much good. This can happen in the congregation, all right? This, can, this is not only on an individual level where if you do something to trespass, this can happen on a collective level in the congregation, all right? Now, Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai which is beside Beth-Avon on the east side of Bethel and spoke to them saying, go up and spy out the country. Remember, they're going up, all right? So the men went up and spied out Ai. How you pronounce that? And they returned to Joshua and said to him, do not let all the people go up, but let about two or 3,000 men go up and attack Ai. Do not worry all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. So about 3,000 men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men, where they chased them from before the gate as far as Shabiram and struck them down on this, the descent. Therefore, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. So what's happening here? All right, what is happening here? God, he, he declared God gave them the city. And now they're going up against people who are fewer in number compared to themselves. Joshua said, don't bother sending them all up. There's no point in that. There's only a few people here. Come on, we can go overtake them. But Joshua doesn't know that somebody has trespassed. So they're going up now against few people. And it says that those few people overcame them and rooted them. How is this? Because there's an accursed thing in the midst of the camp. There's an accursed thing in the midst of the camp. They can't stand against their enemies. All right, let's keep going. Verse six, then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, alas, Lord God, why have you brought this, brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwell on the other side of the Jordan. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns his back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? All right. God, why have you led me to this situation? You said I'm supposed to get the victory. Nothing's happening, Lord. Everything is a chaos. Things are falling apart. I'm supposed to obtain this business deal. It failed. It fell through. I'm supposed to get this job and you, you, told, you told me this, Lord. It fell through. Divine connections are supposed to come into my life, Lord. But people keep coming and relations are being dismantled. I'm supposed to attain this. I'm supposed to go here. But it's like everything is being sabotaged. What's going on, oh God? What's happening? You promised you promise me a spouse, oh Lord. You promised me a husband. You promised me a wife. Every time I get into this relationship to try and go into marriage, Lord, something happens. What's going on, Lord? All right. You may be saying, I rebuke you, Satan, but it may not be Satan. All right. Okay. Maybe God's hand, because there's something that you're doing, either some sin concealed, you're disobedient, transgressed in some way, one form, and it's preventing you from receiving your blessing. It's preventing you from receiving your breakthrough. So let's go. And read the rest now. See what's going on. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have taken, have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. 
I need us to pay attention to that. All right? I need us to pay attention to that. So I'm going to skip down now when he discovered who, who it was, right? And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and, and this is what I've done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wage of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them, and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and he ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. All right. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his son's daughters, his oxen, his donkey, his sheep, his tent, all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned them with stones. They burnt them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. All right. Then they raised a great heap of stones still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Acre to this day. So, right, that they were able to conquer their enemies. All right. Are you wondering why you're going through things that the Lord has told you breakthrough? But yet, your enemies, they're still seem, seem as if they're getting the upper hand, right? Your plans are not working out. You could be rebuking the devil. I rebuke you, Satan, and nothing's happening because it's probably not Satan. Perhaps there's something that you are, you are doing that's against God, that you transgressed in one way or another, some sin, whatever it is. Do you have bitterness, unforgiveness in your heart? All right. Are you, are you committing um, sexual sin in secret? Masturbating with pornography in secret. All right. You have greed, covetousness, you have envy towards someone. All right. Do you even have probably like a cursed objects in your home? You know, people, witchcraft, objects, whatever it is in your home. All right. These are things we have to look into. This is where you have to seek the Lord as Joshua sought the Lord to see what was going on. You have to seek the Lord. What's going on, Lord? Why is it I'm not gaining the victory? You promised me this. What's going on? It could be you having a cursed thing. You have something hidden, even within your heart. All right? Unforgiveness against anyone? Listen, you got to put that away. You have to be delivered from that. Otherwise, you will not be able to stand against your enemies, your spiritual enemies. Your blessings can be blocked. Your breakthrough can be blocked, hindered. And you cannot overcome them. Because you have to put these things away. They have to be removed. They're stumbling blocks. That's, that, that's what the enemy does. Right? He wants you to be ignorant of these things. All right? Because the less those stumbling blocks are in the way, you can't gain the victory. You cannot gain the upper hand. You have to examine yourself, examine your own walk. All right? Many times people are going through a lot of afflictions, you know, torments in their minds in their bodies, whatever it is, you know, they can't rest. They can't sleep. They become so weary. Attacks left, right, up, down, and center. Attack after the next. They can't get ahead in life. What's going on? You know, sin. There's something. There's something in your life that you really have to seek the Lord on. In regards to unforgiveness, Jesus talked about being delivered to the tormentors. All right. I need us to uh, pay attention to this. I'm going to turn to the 18. We just look at this group. All right. Matthew chapter 18. Okay. And I'm going to read this parable that he gave. The parable of the unforgiving servant. All right. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times. Jesus said to him, up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. 
But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife, children, all that he had, and that payment be made. All right. There, the servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, forgave him the debt. But that, that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hand on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. All right. Now pay attention. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his, from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. All right? Torturers. King James Version says tormentors. All right. I want everybody just to pay attention to that. All right. Torture. Now, people don't realize that perhaps why you're being tortured or, you know, spiritually speaking, tortured or tormented in your minds and your life, you know, things are coming at you left and right, probably in your bodies, you know, whatever it is, illness, diseases keep coming, popping up is perhaps you may have some unforgiveness in your heart towards someone. And because of that, it has opened up doorways to these torturers, these demons to afflict you. All right. It may open up doorways to these demons to try and um, hinder your breakthrough, try and block your blessings. All right. You gather much, you gather some, it's taken away, whatever it is. Because you have a, you have some sin, or sins, iniquity that's hidden, that hasn't been confessed, that hasn't been repented from, and it's preventing you from moving forward. We have to examine ourselves. Not everything is always is always you know of the devil, you know. It's not it's not always a devil. Sometimes it's God's hand against you, because you're you're going in the wrong direction, you know. You're trespassing in one way or another. There's a curse things. There are probably a curse objects in your home. Something you're doing, God has told you to put it away, whatever it is. Certain video games, certain TV shows, certain sites, maybe in social media. You know, he has told you to stop doing this, change that, whatever it is, but you you haven't done it yet. And those are creating blockages. God wants his people to move forward. He wants people to prosper. All right, but there's conditions, and that's obedience. That's obedience. Anything that we put before God, that we love before God, that object will become an idol in our life. That object will become a stumbling block before our very faces. And when this happens, even though God has promised you something, it cannot come to fruition. Why? Because of your disobedience. You have taken up the accursed thing. And it has to be removed. Until it's removed, he says, Israel cannot stand against his enemies. That's right. The accursed objects, the sin, it gives the enemy power over your life. You don't want that. We don't want that. We have to examine our walk to ensure we're doing everything that's pleasing to God, to ensure that we don't have any iniquity in our heart, unforgiveness, bitterness, greed, envy, covetousness, whatever it is, sexual morality, things we're doing in secret, you know, whatever it is, God wants people to prosper, not only spiritually, but materially as well in this physical world. But we have to come to a certain point in our life. Where we're going to say, Lord, all I want is you and you alone. Everything else doesn't matter. 
everything else is secondary. I put Jesus first. I want to live a life that's pleasing to him, holy, sanctified, set apart. All right? God wants to elevate you. He has told you things. He has given you word of prophecies through prophets. See, spoken to you through dreams, through his word. Whatever it is, he has declared he wants to bring you there. He wants to bring you there. But he cannot bring you to that next level unless certain things in your life have been removed. All right? For him to, to do it through you, he has to do it to you. He has to break you down, remold you, shape you so he can prepare you for that vessel that's fit for his use. All right? There's a verse in the Bible, I believe it's Timothy, that says, about there's houses of clay jar things that are honorable and things that are dishonorable when we purge ourselves from that which is dishonorable then we become a vessel of honor fit for the master's use all right there's things you have to put away you have to be purged from put it away otherwise god can't use you on the next level those things have to be purged away. That's, that's the allegorical meaning of what's going on in the book of joshua god is bringing them into jericho all right the, they're going to take over the land of Canaan. That's the next level. He's bringing them in, elevating them in now to that good land. New season in life. All right. But when someone in the camp took that accursed thing, they could not stand against their enemies. God couldn't, couldn't go further than that. That has to be removed first. That has to be removed first. Even, as I said, this is not only on a, a single level, um, an individual level regarding somebody specifically, but this can be on a collective level in the congregation. All right, the congregation, God wants to bring that congregation to another next level now. But there's sin in the camp. There's sin in the camp. Congregation can't move forward. Why? Because sin in the camp. People doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Sexual morality, whatever it is. Gossiping, covetousness. I don't know. Witchcraft in secret. Whatever it is, there's sin in the camp. We have to seek God on things to see what is going on in our life. Is this from the devil or is this from you, God? Is this just opposition because we're going the right way? Or is this a rebuke? Is it we can't stand against our enemies because there's something we're doing? We got to ask ourselves this question. We got to ask ourselves this question. All right. Let's go to Judges chapter 2. All right, let's go to Judges chapter 2, everyone. All right. Let's see now. And this reads, all right. Let's pay attention. Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gigal to Bacham, Bacham and said, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will not, I will never break my covenant with you. All right. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. All right. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your side. And their gods shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel the, that the people lifted up their voices and wept. All right, now let's go down. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals, false gods. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Asherahs. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, so he delivered them into the hands of plunderers, plunderers who despoiled them and sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. When went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. All right. Judges 2. I want us to see that now. All right. So what is this teaching us again? All right. You have to put the Lord first. Anything else you put before the Lord has become an idol. That has become a false God. 
As you've seen in that story, right? It says the children of Israel started to worship, you know, the gods of the people around them, all right? Are you doing things that other people are doing, people of this world that you know is against God? Are you engaged in certain activities that they're engaging in? Are you going um, by the ways of this world? That can be a hindrance. That can be a hindrance to your breakthrough. That can be a hindrance to your victory. That can block your blessings. You cannot gain a victory over your enemies if you're partaking in the same sinful activities as those who are against the Lord. Got to cut them loose. Some friends you got to cut off. Can't hang with them. Sorry to tell you. Some family members you got to cut off. If they're not sold out to Jesus, got to let them go. You got to let them go. Some people don't belong in your life because they themselves can hinder you. Bad company corrupts good morals. Yes. Yes, the devil can use some people and bring them into your life. That way, those who become an open door for the devil to come into your life and afflict you, hinder you. Because you're now uh, associating with them, partaking what they're doing. All right. We got to be discerning, people. We got to be discerning. We got to be discerning. He said they sold them into plunderers, plunderers now. All right. You're trying to save money. You're trying to you're trying to, you know, get money, whatever it is. But every time you go up, something happens. Boom. Money, money. Going. Something comes up. Something comes up. What is going on? You know. We have to examine ourselves. You know, what is going on? All right. Are you handing over to plunderers? Are you worshiping false gods? Idols? Examine our steps. Put away the accursed thing. What is it? Seek the Lord. This is something you have to seek the Lord. I can't stress this enough. This is something you have to seek the Lord on. To see, Lord, examine my heart. Search me. Show me. Is there any perverse way in me? Is there anything that I'm doing that's preventing me from receiving what you promised me? Is there anything I'm doing that's not pleasing to you? Show it to me. All right. Has the Lord has spoken to you about anything that you should stop doing? A sin you're doing in secret? I don't know, watching violent movies, you know, soap operas, violent video games, playing them. All right. You're gossiping. All right. You're envying somebody, coveting things. You're greedy. As he told you to, to give arms to people and you still haven't given yet. You're holding on to money tight, idolizing money. All right. Those things can be hindrances. There's times, I need to focus on this, right? Jesus said, in regards to arms, Jesus said, given, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men pour into your bosom. There's times God wants to bless you fin uh, financially. He wants to bless you financially, right? Before he does that, he allows you to be tested. Somebody poor and needy may come, you know, whether it's a family member, you know, somebody you don't know, may ask for help or something. And you decide, I'm, I'm not going to help that person, you know, and God may send somebody else, you know, same thing. And you, you're not helping them. You're not helping them. And you're not realizing that that's God sending someone so that way you can help them. So arms, give arms for you to receive that blessing that God has for you, because whoever faithful in little is also faithful in much. If you can't be faithful in little by helping people with the little that you have, how do you expect God to give you more? which will cause you to help more people. How do you expect God's going to do that? God's not going to do that. No, man, you got to be faithful in the Lord that you have. That right there is the doorway to, to, to release your blessing. But because you're being stingy, not helping those who are in need, you're expecting God to bless me, God bless me. No, God waiting for you to bless someone, then he'll come and bless you. As you sow, then you'll reap. That's how it works. But you haven't been sowing. I haven't been sowing. And hey, this is not only tied to money alone, you know, whether it's food, you have to give clothes to the naked, whatever, it, whatever it is, you know. The point of this is, is this. It's not always the devil. It's not always the devil as an opposition coming, you know, when God is bringing you somewhere and he's opposing it. It's not always him. At times, it's God's hand because it's something that we're doing. And this is what we need to examine.
ourselves first. We need to examine ourselves. Put away the accursed things. Examine our walk. Examine our steps. God wants to bring you into a new season in your life. All right. He wants to bring you into your Jericho, into your Canaan. He wants to. He wants to bless you. He wants to elevate you. He has a purpose for your life. All right. You haven't been born into this world in vain. He has called you for a purpose, for a reason. You came to Jesus Christ. And there is a reason and a purpose that God has for you. He wants to bless you. So we have to take, take heed to this. Examine our walk. Examine our motives. Examine our hearts. Examine ourselves daily. Daily. Spend time in prayer in that secret place. Incorporate fasting in your life that helps to build the spirit man, that helps to clear your mind, helps your spirit to become more sensitive to the voice of God. You can hear him more clearly as you incorporate fasting in your life. Turn down that plate. All right. And just continue to stay close with him. Don't get carried away with things. Don't get, get caught up with the lust and desires of this world. Don't. But keep your mind on the kingdom of God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Examine your walk. Put away the accursed thing. Whatever God has spoken to you about before and you haven't done it yet, do it. Because if you don't, you cannot overcome your enemies. You're praying this, you're praying that, you're warfaring, but you're not gaining the victory. You have to put away the accursed thing first. And then God can bring you to the next level and he'll transition you into the new season in your life. Listen, I pray this blessed someone. I pray this touched your heart and that we take heed to this message, that it teaches us to examine our walk, to examine ourselves. Stay close to Jesus. Continue to walk with him. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with us as saints forevermore. All be blessed in Jesus' name.